Apollo 14 began at Cape Kennedy today, and the three astronauts who are to fly this mission to the moon underwent their final pre-flight examination. The countdown is scheduled for 102 hours, and the rest period totaling 48 hours, ending in launch next Sunday afternoon. The countdown has begun for the Apollo 14 mission to the moon. Astronauts Shepard, Rusa, and Mitchell underwent a four-hour medical examination today and were pronounced ready to fly. And with the astronauts in perfect health, space officials are making sure they stay that way between now and next Sunday's launch. The three pilots will be restricted to quarters all week under a new medical isolation policy. No more German measles scares such as that which knocked astronaut Tom Mattingly out of the Apollo 13 flight last spring. The Apollo 14 astronauts were in spacecraft simulators today testing their reactions to possible emergencies that might take place on their flight to the moon which begins Sunday. But not all the problems faced by the astronauts are in outer space. ABC Science editor Jules Bergman reports from Cape Kennedy. More than 10,000 engineers and technicians have been laid off here in the last 18 months. And after the near disaster of Apollo 13, when human error nearly cost the lives of the astronauts, the space agency suddenly realized that men in fear of losing their jobs might not be able to do their best. There are 13 million parts in the Saturn V rocket, the Apollo and Lunar Module spacecraft. And while sometimes several can fail, it only takes one critical part failing to end the mission or cause a catastrophe. The Apollo 14 crew themselves were pressed into service, taping and filming pep talks that are played over loudspeakers and shown to the aerospace workers. The outcome of Apollo 14 and the remaining Apollo lunar missions will have a great effect on the future of manned spaceflight. If we come through, all of us, with flawless textbook flights, then Skylab, the Space Shuttle, and future manned programs are going to have an easier time getting off the ground. Of course, we're dependent on you, the members of the checkout and launch team at KSC, to guarantee us a safe, flawless launch and flight aboard Apollo 14. That means every functional component of both the Saturn and Apollo checked, tested, and operating as designed. The morale building extends to posters and bumper stickers, emphasizing togetherness, dedication, and teamwork. Morale seems to have gone up, but no one is sure. And there are reports of possible new layoffs, which is why everyone, including the Apollo 14 crew, is still worried. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News, at Cape Kennedy. With just three days left until blast-off, the Apollo 14 astronauts underwent a series of rigorous tests today to determine their ability to react in an emergency. The supervising space officials said that no Apollo crew has ev even ever been so well trained for a mission. The commander of Sunday's moon flight is Alan Shepard, who 10 years ago became the first American in space. However, not long after that historic flight, Shepard developed a serious ear disorder and was grounded for six years. It was generally assumed he'd never go on another space mission. But now he's back, and David Schumacher reports. There were seven Mercury astronauts, but he was the first to fly in space. When Alan Shepard stepped from that van in May 1961, he stepped away from the others and stood alone. Gagarin had done it first, had orbited the Earth, Shepard's flight was short, just 300 miles downrange. But to a nation's badly bruised ego, it was enough. Shepard was our first space hero. For a time, the applause, the motorcades, the receptions were for him alone. Shepard set the style for the others, but he was never like the others. And being first increased the separation. Shepard was off flying status for six years. He admits it was hard watching others prepare for their missions, hard to brief reporters, and then watch McDivitt and White and Grissom and Shara and the others pass him by. The astronauts are proud men. The competition is fierce. Shepard admits he felt his ear problem was a stigma, a personal failing. A Christian scientist, he finally found a surgeon willing to perform a delicate operation, relieving the pressure buildup in his ear. Then, he began a rigorous schedule of briefings and study to catch up. To outsiders, it is a mystery why Shepard, safely a hero and safely a millionaire, should want to risk it all now at the age of 47. It was difficult for me uh, 
For example, in the Gemini days, when I was uh, along with Deke Slayton, we used to alternate as directors of each of these respective flight crews. To be with a crew during the uh, final stages of their training and uh, and help them with their policy making decisions and these kind of things and uh, and take them down and uh, get them suited up and take them to the launch pad and then watch them go away. These, they sure they've been difficult times. Same thing in the Apollo program when Deke and I used to alternate doing the same thing. It's it's very difficult to want to do that and and yet be relegated to the role of helping only uh, someone else do it. So it, it's been it's been hard. How sure were you that you would fly again? Not very sure at all until recently, the last couple of years. Was there a moment at which you knew you were going to fly, that a decision was made, or did it just grow? Uh, well, obviously there had to be a moment when everyone who had examined my improvement to my physical condition was satisfied that I was qualified physically to go, and this was a fairly long process, a post-operative process of uh, perhaps seven or eight months. It was obvious to me that things were improving, and it was obvious that my chances were getting better, so my uh, morale started to improve. Uh, I guess it was, uh, you know, the final moment when, uh, when the doctor said, okay, you're qualified to go, or was the time, which... Uh, was the greatest news. Fortunately, the space agency counts down a little better than we do. It's four days until the Sunday launch of Apollo 14. The Apollo 14 astronauts, Shepard, Rusa, and Mitchell, today practiced what to do in the event of an emergency. They kept at it for four hours, and as each situation arose, the corrective actions they took were closely monitored. As the countdown proceeds smoothly for Sunday's Apollo 14 launch to the moon, there still exists in the minds of many Americans a lingering concern because of the near tragedy that befell the Apollo 13 flight last April. In the months since the narrow escape, space scientists worked to improve Apollo's safety standards. Bill Stout reports from Downey, California. With all the aerospace cutbacks, the Apollo assembly and test area at North American Rockwell still is very much in business. On one side of the big clean room, the service and command sections of three spacecraft are being manufactured for future flights. This room gives the clearest look at the changes made for safety reasons in the ship due to go up this weekend. Changes made to prevent the kind of heat and fuel and oxygen combination that caused the fire and explosion on 13. North American's chief Apollo research pilot, Leo Krupp, talked about the measures taken to prevent a second accident. We tried to do that by removing everything inside of the oxygen tank that was combustible. We removed uh, all the insulation from the wires that uh, was inflammable. We even removed all the aluminum parts because we found that in a 100% oxygen environment under high heat, aluminum would burn. We replaced all that with stainless steel. We took all the wires and encased them in stainless steel conduits, sealed them off on both ends so the wire and its insulation for the various uh, metering devices that we have in the, in the oxygen tanks would be completely isolated from the uh, oxygen environment. They hope to avoid the problems 13 had in getting home after the accident when the power supply, oxygen supply, and water supply all were driven dangerously close to the minimums for survival. They have added an extra oxygen tank and five one-gallon bags to store water, which otherwise would be tossed off, and they have put in a storage battery, the same kind motorists everywhere are used to, except it's bigger. With all the precautions built into the Apollo program over the last 10 years, the most stringent measures the top scientists and engineers could devise, Apollo 14 will have an even greater margin of safety, which is not to say all risk has been removed or all questions answered, the purpose of the space program, after all, is to find new challenges and meet them through research and development. Bill Stout, CBS News, North American Rockwell, Downey, California. The Apollo 14 astronauts, Mitchell, Rusa, and Shepard, continued their intensive rehearsals today at Cape Kennedy for Sunday's liftoff. Space flights are not so numerous nowadays, and astronaut morale may be affected. John Chancellor has been looking into that. For anyone who has come down here before to cover a space shot, things look pretty much the same. But this time, there are some significant differences. May we have your attention, please? 
The following is a brief message for all KSC personnel from the Apollo 14 mission commander, astronaut Alan Shepard. Apollo 14 launch day is fast approaching. What this is a device to boost morale. The cutbacks in the space program made some of these workers uneasy. So this tape is played three times a day. To the best of your ability. In the, the morale campaign includes everybody at Cape Kennedy. In addition to the recorded message, 12,000 letters have gone out to employees from the astronauts. Booklets and pamphlets have been issued. And, in NASA terminology, a motivational film was produced. Remember, fewer workers mean increased responsibility for each of you. So let's get with it. Our future depends upon what you do today. When NASA decides to do something, it does it. The morale campaign has been extended to posters and bumper stickers. NASA officials say it has helped to give the workers a feeling that they are, in fact, connected with a moon landing. Alan Shepard himself, the commander of Apollo 14, was worried about the effect the bad morale might have on the people who put all the parts together. They are, of course, immensely critically important to the mission. So, while some of these workers feel justifiably uneasy about their futures, they are doing the job properly. The Apollo 14 crew is counting on you and on your work. Thank you. While Apollo 14 is on its way to the moon, and before it gets there, several hundred workers here will be laid off and more will follow.